Yay, and welcome everyone. And I am going to open the agenda. The agenda you can see in the chat box. So I wanna make sure I can see this. There we go. All right, our theme for the day is life balance and I'm going to fill in for Andrea as our Toastmaster until she arrives, if she does arrive. And at this point, I'd like to just say welcome to our guests. Welcome, David. <laughs> David, you, would you like to share with the rest of the group where you're from? Again, I know we've already talked about it, but I'd love to hear it one more time for the recording. No problem. No problem. Hello, and division from Pekutus Masters in uh, sorry from Pekutus Masters in Taiwan. Also, and also a dear member of Library Two's Master, also in Taiwan. And today is my pleasure. Today is my pleasure to serve as the firefighter of Taiwan today. Looking forward to your speech. Looking forward to your meeting today. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Welcome, David. <laughs> and I'm also going to ask for, pop up my agenda again. <coughs> Lori, could you let us know what you're going to be doing as our grammarian and our awe counter today? Oh, you're muted. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. As a grammarian, I will be listening for the use of filler words or interesting uses of grammar or incorrect uses of grammar and giving a report at the end of the meeting. I also have a word of the day to share with you. Joyance. <clears throat> Joyance means gladness or a joyous feeling. And is it backwards? No. Do you see it backwards? No, it's perfect. I see it backwards. That's only video. for you in, in your own video. thumbnail. Okay, good. I'm glad it's forwards for you. The melodies chime sweetly with the joyance of the mood. Please try to use the word of the day, joyance, and I'll be keeping track and giving a report at the end of the meeting. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Lori. That was wonderful. And I look forward to a joyous experience today <laughs> within our Toastmasters meeting. And David, would you like to introduce what, how you'll be timing for us today? I'd love to hear and see your timing mechanisms, please. Okay. Okay. Two semester of the day, and ladies and gentlemen, today's my honor to serve as the timer rule today. And to control the meeting time, I have three signals to help you control the meeting time. The first one is the, when I raise the, when I raise this one, it's just like the green flag in each meeting. It means you have reached the time minimum requirement. For the rest of the speakers, it means you have two minutes left for table topic speaker and individual evaluator. We have one minute left. For this, for this one, when, you, uh, when I raise the, this one is a book. It means just like uh, the signal of the yellow flag. For, for the speakers, for previous speakers, it means you have one minute left. You need to uh, one minute left for tabletop speaker and individual evaluator is mean you have 30 seconds left. You, when I raise this one, try to conclude your speech as soon as possible. When I raise this one, it means your time is up. And for each speaker, including the tabletop speaker and individual evaluators, you have 30 seconds leeway to conclude your speech or Conclude your speech. Okay, that's all of my introduction as a timer rule. Thank you, Toastmaster of our day. Thank you, David. And just in from our
previously scheduled Toastmaster. Her Wi-Fi is out again. <laughs> so she's not going to be joining us, Andrea. Uh, so we'll hope, we'll wish her some happy Wi-Fi connections and hopefully she'll get that fixed soon. At this time, I'd like to introduce our do we, did I miss another role? Let me see, Let me make sure I didn't miss anyone. Timers, okay. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, wait a minute, Don? Yes. Did you want me to take on general evaluator? Is there a GE? Yes, I would love to hear what you're gonna do as a general evaluator. All right, well, my role as general evaluator will be to evaluate the meeting as a whole and look at that and use the evaluation team to evaluate the individual speakers. Back to you, Don. Thank you, Rick. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Trisha Grow, and she is speaking. This is her first, uh, it's Dynamic Leadership. Oh wait, is that the right one? Yeah, it's Dynamic Leadership Level 3. Okay, I, I do have that. So Dynamic Leadership Level 3, Increasing Knowledge, Connecting with Storytelling. Her title of her speech is My Mentor Michelle, and today Trisha will be sharing a story on how she met her mentor and how she helped shape her speaking and leadership skills. My Mentor Michelle, please help me welcome Trisha Grow. Do you have someone that's really helped you in your life or pushed you just a little bit to get you going? Well, that person in my life was my good friend, Michelle. I met Michelle at my local church and I hadn't really know her that well. I, she was a member. We have about 80 people in my church. So I don't know every single person in my church on a, on a first name basis. I, I was aware of her, but I didn't really know her at the time. Well, my church happened to host a women's conference, and she was the MC. During this women's conference, it was actually revealed to me that I was supposed to be a leader, and I had no idea how to do that. So after the conference, I approached Michelle because I knew that she was a Toastmaster. And I asked her to invite me to a meeting. She did. And once I attended, I joined that very same night. But during that meeting, able topics happened. And she volunteered me. She held up her hand, but pointed to me to go up and do my very first table topic session. This was a precursor of our entire relationship. <laughs> she was always either volunteering me or pushing me to try new things that I've never done. Just a short few meetings later, Michelle approached me because our, our club at that time only had six members and it was May which meant it was time for nominations for our club officer roles. And she handed me a leadership book and she said, decide what office you would like to run for. She didn't ask me if I wanted to run for an office. She told me to choose one. So I looked through the, all the different options, president, vice president of education, and so on and so forth. I was like, I don't know what any of this means. I've only attended three meetings, but just reading the descriptions, president seems fairly easy. So I, I think we're gonna take that one. <laughs> and I became president of a Toastmaster club with only three meetings underneath my belt. <laughs> and our immediate past president left the state. She moved across country, so she was not available for me to receive input as to how she had ran her presidency. So I'd started my fly by the seat of your pants presidency throughout 
that year. And so Michelle and I began this journey. She happened to be our area director of my club, that district that year. And I had decided at I, fairly off early on in my Toastmaster career that I really, really wanted to go for my Dis Distinguished Toastmaster Award. And I knew that an area directorship would be in my future at some point. And she invited me to shadow her so that I, when that opportunity presented itself, I would feel confident to do so. So I attended many, many area director visits with her being the area director and me just being a plain old Toastmaster guest at, at meetings. And I got to see how she handled certain situations and many, met many, many Toastmasters this way in my, in my district. Well, life is really funny because Pathways came along in November and I decided, well, I don't think that I'm going to be able to become an area director in the two years that we have left to finish in the traditional path. So I will just stop what I'm doing in the traditional path and I'll start my Pathways. And at the time, I was actually in the midst of the speech contest season. I had won my club contest and had entered into the area contest. Well, I came in second, which I thought, you know, for a first time Toastmaster, a first speech contest ever to finish second out of six or seven people, I, I thought I did fairly well. I was very proud of myself. And then we had our division contest. Well, I, I attended because I was friendly with the winner, Tim White, and I thought, well, maybe, just maybe, he won't show up. I am second place, so I might have to take his place. I'll just show up just in case. Well, I was pleasantly surprised when the division director announced me as incoming area director during the introductions in the speech contest. And I had no clue that this was happening. It was a gigantic surprise when I told my, my mentor, Michelle, I said, Michelle, they surprised me and I found out that I'm going to be an area director. I need to hit the brakes and take a 180 and go back and finish my DTM in the traditional pathway. And she sat down with me and we mapped it out to see if it was even possible because there's a large body of work that you have to complete to finish your distinguished Toastmaster at this point was even quite two years. And normally it takes Toastmasters two, three, or more uh, years to complete. So we had to sit down and map it out to decide, should I even attempt this? And she sat down with me and we mapped it out and she said, yes, okay, firstly, it is possible. Now we're going to schedule you to have at least two speeches every month between now and June of 2020 so that you are able to finish. The nice thing about becoming an area director though is I had so many more speaking opportunities and I've well advanced of where I thought I would be. I'm nearly completed with my advanced communicator gold and once I finish my area directorship at next June, this coming June, I will only have to have either a mentorship or a sponsorship of a club, which I am a sponsor of this club. So if you would like to help me finish my DTM, I invite you to join this club. Back to you. Yay! Wonderful, Trisha. <laughs> really, 
enjoyed learning about your journey. And you'll hear more about that during our evaluation portion of the meeting. At this time, I would like to introduce our second speaker. And our second speaker is Aaron Long. So Aaron, please unmute yourself. I'm going to go through your introduction here in a second. Aaron will be speaking on strategic relationships, level three, increasing knowledge, connecting with your audience. Um, Aaron hasn't given a speech <laughs> for at least three months. So this is going to be a, a, where he is sharing with us a speech. And he is somebody who's been doing a lot of leadership things and we're getting back to the basics of, of speaking. So at this point, his title of the speech is Move On. Please, <laughs> move on, please. Please help me welcome Aaron Long. Thank you very much. Before we start, I have to correct. Uh, I've, I've actually typed in the chat box saying I changed my speech to connect with storytelling instead of connect with audience, which is an easier option. So same title, but different projects, same level. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, think about the moment whereby your dreams are just in front of you. And that dream is just within reach. But you don't know why that you trip and fell and you lost that dream forever. I come to realization a few days ago when I actually just turned on my Skype, checked on the people that I have blocked before. For those of you who have actually blocked people, you are not in the wrong. There are some people who are annoying that you might block. But I do not know why I just go for a crave and just check people. I rarely block people. And I notice a familiar picture, a picture of someone holding up a ring. And that ring is an engagement ring. That person was my ex. So today, if you're thinking about the story about ex-girlfriend and all the loving stories and stuff, you are in the wrong place. I am not going to talk about that particular moment, but talk about how I truly feel when I realize that people do move on. I've been stuck in this place in Hong Kong for three years. My ex was from Taiwan and really someone that I truly admire and dearly love. And because of her, I become a bit of restless and just doing work for the sake of work. I lost my purpose. I totally destroyed it on my own. Remembering the days back in UK when I first met this lady and I was actually planning to leave that place for a while. I never really liked UK because it's like 50 years ancient of Hong Kong. The trains, people are rioting. The food is awful. If I want to try sushi, that is not authentic sushi. And I still go for those green bean sushi, which is in paste. And it still costs you at least two pounds per sushi. And I can get two pounds for a quality one in here. Then this person comes in when I was actually having my mood to really just devote for work. And then after which I fell in love back with this place. There was a reason. And I, because of that, I flew back to Hong Kong without a hesitation. I bought the etiquette and flew it back to UK just to put my luggage. It was a fresh start, a dangerous start, risky start. And as some of you may know, it turned out to be a happy ending for that point. But as the time goes along, things do go hiccup. Romantically, it's upwards. Arguments, it's like stock market. We have to deal with it sometime. But no one wants the bad ending unless they want to. 
So slowly, steadily, we ditched the part. I was in Hong Kong, she was in Taiwan. And then after which we both blocked each other because of arguments. That time I was faced with family crisis. She was faced with family matters too. Unfortunately, I have not gotten over it at that point. And she moved on. The only sentimental I can give to her is really just honest blessing. But definitely in my heart, it's like, why do everything end up like that? And because of that situation, for those of you who actually see me standing up and do presentations, I have a belly button. And because of that belly button, it's because of drinking wine, beer, consecutively for three years. And that's why I got all those health issues that comes after that. I only can blame myself. Because it's your own fate that you decide. But what about those memories of hers that you cannot let go? It's until this picture that's come to my mind that I start to realize that, hey, look, people do move on. Time still runs through every single day. What can you do better? I took the first step. I blocked her, sent a message, congratulations, and blocked her back again. Because I do not dare to see what her reply is. I do not dare to confront because I know I'm still in the shadows of really not trying to move on. And my logical mind is simply telling me this, move on. Stop thinking about it. It's a waste of time. No matter how hard I try, I still couldn't get over it. Because I asked myself, do I truly cherish this relationship? Yes. Why did it end this way? And then there is an awakening moment that in life, not everything goes along your way. We know that through experience. It's only our perception that start to change things apart. You are what you are. Just like this olive here. If you make it as a toy, it won't melt. At least it will start thinking positively and still enjoying life with a smile. Can I have that smile? Yes, you can. And how? It's by changing yourself. Changing by taking the first very step that you are afraid to confront. I unblocked her again and said, if you're still treating me as a friend, please unblock me. Time passed. She didn't. Not every happy ending happens. But hey, look, you tried your best. At least you take the first step. And that step is the moment of changing your perception. If you're able to change perception, there are many things in life that you can look forward to. Not just from the moment that you stopped. It's about you start walking again. The blood crosses, your dreams come back, and you know that you can impact life. You know you can change history. Oh, you can't, sorry. You can change the future. But ladies and gentlemen, have you tried that first step? I am a devoted idiot lover, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop there and not loving any future girls that I may encounter. So, life is like a mist. Okay, I have a water ball. I only can spray. You can't see the mist, but there's a mist. It's about illusions, but then you only have to walk through it by taking the first step to make history in the future. Back to you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. And I could see the mist. So... At this point, I'd like to introduce the second part portion of our meeting, uh, which will be our table topics, and we're actually right on time with that. So, Doug Thiessen, could you please unmute yourself and take us right into the meeting and to our table topics portion of the meeting? Please help me welcome Doug Thiessen. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, and welcome everyone. 
For today's table topics, I thought I would do something a little fun. I mean, right now we're in the holiday season. There are various different holidays that people celebrate, including for a lot of people, Christmas, but also Hanukkah at this time of year. New Year's Day is coming um, for a lot of people as well. So there's various different holidays that happen right now. And a lot of people have favorite things to do or see, traditions of various sorts. And I wanted to ask people about certain things that they, uh, that they do traditionally or that they like to do. But also, just for fun, and as a bit of a counterbalance to the word of the day, while we all are encouraged to say joyance today and hope that we find some joyance in doing so, I want to give each speaker a word that you need to strive to not say. Just to make an extra little challenge, we are an advanced club, and I think that this could be fun. So I would like to ask for our first topic, perhaps Lori, could you tell us about your family tradition, but not say the word the, T-H-E, the. <coughs> Please welcome Lori. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. My favorite tradition for Hanukkah is around food. We celebrate Jewish holidays with food. Did you know that most Jewish holidays have this theme of there was a war, we won, now let's eat. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> for Hanukkah, we make latkes, which are potato pancakes, because we're celebrating an oil lamp, which was lit and had only enough oil for one day, but oil lasted for eight days. In Europe, the staple, oops, in Europe, one staple of food is potato. Therefore, in Europe, the tradition for Ashkenazi Jews, a tradition for Ashkenazi Jews, was to eat potatoes with oil. In Israel, the tradition is eating flour with oil since flour is one staple in Israel. In Israel, they eat donuts for Hanukkah. Ashkenazi Jews eat potatoes with oil, which are potato pancakes. There isn't anyone on earth that makes better potato pancakes than my husband, Rick Weiner. Mostly because he's not afraid to use a lot of oil. They are like, they are deep fried potato lockies and they're crispy and delicious. We eat them with homemade applesauce and sour cream. Our friends and family look forward to celebrating Hanukkah with us every year to get a sample of Rick's potato lockies. That's one tradition I wanted to share with you, Doug. Thank you, Lori, for telling us about potato latkes as your tradition. I think it's great. And good job trying not to use the word the. I think that this is actually, I, this is going to be a fun exercise. In fact, I wanted to ask our next participant about a traditional food or treat that they like to eat at this time of year. And I think that I'm going to ask Dawn for her response without using the word eat. <laughs> oh, 
how tricky of you, Mr. Table Topics Master. So, my favorite food that I like to consume during the holidays, I have to say, from Thanksgiving till the new year, it is a consistent yes to as much pumpkin pie as my family is willing to cook. I love pumpkin pie. And I love taking little tiny forks of pumpkin pie and piling whipped cream on top of it, you know, with the, the spray can. So it just keeps piling up high. So one little tiny piece of pumpkin pie with a big monstrous pile of whipped cream on top. And I like to just <clears throat> shove it in my mouth. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And daily, yes, I also like to hide the pumpkin pie from myself so I don't consume too much pumpkin pie. But Mr. Table Topics Master, <laughs> pumpkin pie is by far my favorite food <laughs> to indulge in from Thanksgiving till the new year. So back to you, thank you. Thank you, Don, very nicely done for finding some synonyms to describe how you would eat. <laughs> and I do enjoy a great pumpkin pie with whipped cream, definitely. I'd like to ask someone to tell us about a favorite movie that they enjoy on the holidays. A lot of people, including myself, have a number of movies that I like to traditionally view at this time. Um, perhaps David, you'd like to tell us about a movie without saying the word watch. With welcome, David. You're muted right now. When it comes to movie, uh, I'm sure about a, a movie I used to enjoy is Kung Fu Panda, the episode three, which was cast as, which was made by the DreamWorks. Why do I say that? Because, because the first time I came to the theater to enjoy it, I found, well, it may be another great an animation I've, I've ever, I've ever enjoyed. Because, because in my experience of watching the Cover Painter 1 and 2, I really enjoy, I I really enjoy it because it's it's funny and interesting. But most of all, most of all, the most important thing is it inspired me a lot because because in the first in the first episode, the core value is to trust you are the best. You have a, the strongest power to help out to help others and and you have the greatest power to beat the enemy. And the second thing the second episode of the movie is uh, of the movie is the past is not the is not the important. The most important thing is you need to build your own life. And luckily when I enjoy the episode three I found it never it didn't disappoint me. Why just that? Because because in this movie it reveals a re, re, reveals a message to 
surprise yourself and make may make you stronger and stronger and you can be a better person to help more and more person so that's why i i share my experience of kung fu panda okay that's all my sharing thank you david for telling us about your favorite movie i've seen kung fu panda but i haven't seen number three so i'll have to check that out I think we have time for one more table topic. So I'd like to ask Rick to tell us about a, a traditional plant or, you know, a shrubbery that you might like at this time of year and do so without saying the word it. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. A traditional plant or shrubbery for this time of the year. As I would assume you know, I'm Jewish. We don't do anything with poinsettias or other plants of that nature. I suppose the best plant that I would use at this time of the year would be potato plants because we dig up the potatoes and grind them down with the onions and the eggs and the oil, which olive oil, we need the olive trees to have the oil. We take all these plants and create delicious foods. My friends, it's not the plants we look at, but the plants we consume. And as you can tell, I know how to consume plants but I also know how to consume the animals that eat the plants, and that's what helps create what I am. Mr. Topics Master, give me the product of the plants, and I will create for you the most delicious latkes, as my wife said, sofganiot, beautiful jelly donuts, other types of delicious edibles, Salads, eh, they're okay, but mostly the delicious Hanukkah is an opportunity to enjoy life. Enjoy your plants, enjoy life. Mr. Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for <laughs> telling us about uh, the, the potato is your favorite plant. I think that that was a great description. And as we know from the plants of your labor, so shall we know you. <laughs> I'd like to now turn it back to our Toastmaster, uh, Dawn, to continue our meeting. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> are what you can't say table topics. <laughs> what fun. I'm so glad you did that, Doug. And I look forward to hearing what our general evaluator has to bring to our meeting um, regarding your table topics. And at this time, I'd like to ask our, table, our general evaluator for the day to bring us into our evaluation portion of the meeting and introduce our evaluators and get started there. I'm the first evaluator, but Rick, back to you. Thank you, Don, thank you. And yes, as general evaluator, my role is to evaluate the meeting as a whole. And I would like to start off by saying we did start the meeting on time, even though there was a little confusion with the few people that were here and the Toastmaster not being present. And Dawn with her phenomenal talents, tried to reach out to the Toastmaster, couldn't get a hold of her, and took over on that role and did a beautiful job doing that. I commend you, Dawn, for doing such a great job without any preparation, but seeing what was in the agenda and doing excellent introductions for people. Very, very good, considering that was not a role that you would plan to take on. 
each person, David, you gave a great description as to what you were supposed to do. You weren't too lengthy with that because no need to be. We are an advanced club. I enjoyed listening to that. Now for our first speech evaluation. As Dawn said, she is the first evaluator. Please evaluate the first speech that we listened to and see where we go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And at this time, I'd like to evaluate Trisha's speech, my mentor, Michelle. And I'd like to share the purpose of her speech. And that is the project here is the purpose of this project is for the member to practice using a story within a speech or giving a speech that is a story, which Trisha did very well. And <coughs> take, get back here. <laughs> yes, I'm going to mute you, Rick. Oh, you got yourself. Okay. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to point out about Trisha's speech and particularly her ability to, to hold this camera space is you or Trisha has really expressive facial expressions. And it's a joy to hear you speak, hear Trisha speak when she's presenting anything. Your face has so many nuances and takes us, brings us into the story so nicely. You use this, I'm really trying hard to do the third person. So Trisha used her facial expressions more than she used her hands. And in that, I'd like to maybe challenge you to, to bring your hands up into, into the screen. Maybe not like I'm doing right now, I'm over exaggerating. However, when we're giving a speech and there are opportunities to use your hands in. I think you did it a couple times. I think Trisha was trying to use her hands, but I couldn't quite see them. I could feel her body moving, but I couldn't see the, the hands. So I would like to see the hands more. But your face does an excellent job. Trisha's face does an excellent job <laughs> of expressing so many things within just, just this area of the screen. I, I wrote that down so many times about Trisha, so expressive. There was a story within the story. There was a story of her leadership journey through before Toastmasters and through Toastmasters. So I appreciate the fact that Trisha was able to share a part of her Toastmasters journey with us and where it started with a Toastmaster, but where it started sort of through a what I took as a revealing and a call that you're to be a leader and how you answer that call or how Trisha answered that call is was revealed through her story I appreciated the the call and the the journey through how you answered it how she answered it um, and where our where we fit into her story was that was the ending of her speech, which I appreciated that she brought us into her story in that last statement saying to help us be, you know, help her achieve her goal, then we could join this club and help her get there. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much to Trisha and turn the meeting back over to Rick, our general evaluator. Thank you, Don, for your evaluation. Excellent job. I did think that you touched most of the spots of Trisha's speech, and you helped that in a very joyous way of describing what was going on with Trisha's speech and how it affected you and the club. Thank you so much for doing that. Do and we want to do it again, Robin? Oh, yes. Could we have any feedback, any thoughts that anyone may have? regarding Trisha's speech. Well, yes, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come in. Uh, Trisha, I thought you had a good story. I was quite interested in hearing your journey in Toastmasters a bit and how your mentor helped you. There's one area I wanted to challenge you with. 
is with regard to sort of the focus on the topic. Um, you know, since your speech was about your mentor, I found that when you were talking about being in the speech contest and moving up, especially to division, I didn't actually see where the mentor fit in there. And then it switched rather heavily to, or abruptly to, oh, I'm area governor. I have no, or director, I had no idea. Uh, and so I think I found the actual part about the speech contest to be a little bit of a distraction to the story overall. And I think that you could have streamlined that just a little bit for next time, but I still definitely enjoyed the story overall. Thank you, Doug. Is there any other feedback? Yes, Laurie. I enjoyed Trisha's speech very much. I agree with Dawn. Trisha has a way of being so incredibly expressive with her facial expressions. She connects with the audience. She exudes warmth in a very genuine way which I think is a beautiful quality. And similar to the lines of what Doug was saying, I found Trisha's speech interesting to learn about her journey, but I thought it was more about her journey than about her mentor. So I think there's an opportunity to even modify the speech and modify the title and deliver the speech about her journey. I found the part about uh, things that are needed for DTM interesting and valuable for Toastmasters to hear, but again, I didn't think it was connected enough to how the mentor helped Trisha in that situation. Overall, I think Trisha's speech was very, very well done, and I see she has opportunities to modify it and maybe deliver it again. Back to you, Mr. GE. Thank you so much for your feedback, Lori. Excellent job. And now I think we would like to move on to Aaron's evaluator, his speech evaluator. And who has that role, may I ask? I hear crickets. I don't think anyone signed up for that. Yeah, I I but didn't see anything on the agenda. I did take some notes so I could do it if no one else is volunteering well, to do the round robin. Why don't you jump in then? Thank you, Don. Thank you, Rick. So Aaron, Aaron's speech was, I believe it's a similar, uh, a very similar um, purpose, which was to tell a story through this project and which he did, he did tell a story. However, um, I felt it was, I felt that it could have been more tied together to maybe a single story line because I felt that there were a little bit of jumping around from place to place. However, there was a clear story of the love loss <laughs> or the love and then the love loss and moving on. Um, I was a tiny bit confused at the very beginning about, is this going to be about something else or, you know, what was this going to be about? And it was very clear through the whole speech though, this was about this love interest of Aaron's. So it was the story of, the meeting, the situations. And I know that this is most likely a lot to go into a short speech, but I, I feel that he did a good job of summarizing it very well and giving us as much as he could within a short period of time about the relationship. And I, the one thing I was curious about that I've never heard before is you said you got a belly button and I have to say Aaron, we all have a belly button so I don't know if that's a, a term that is used in another part of the world that I've never heard before but I would be interested in learning more about does that mean that you have a belly 
you know, like a bigger belly or is it like meaning that your belly button is popped out because you've eaten so much wine and drinking for three years, <laughs> which is what I heard you say. So I appreciate fat belly. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you typing that into the chat. Um, I also like that you, I kind of liked it and I kind of didn't. So we'll, we'll see, but there was how Aaron did this transition to the last part was he took us from the the story of the girl then just kind of jumped us into what how we can move forward and i kind of felt disconnected like how did aaron move forward i mean there, I, it just felt like there was a a transition that maybe could have been used there to help us trust that you have moved on <laughs> And maybe this is a part of your process or a part of his process in moving on is sharing our story with us here. And I also uh, love the idea of changing perception. So Aaron, I would encourage you if you're gonna give this speech again, that to maybe even give a couple more examples on how you would or how you have changed your perception, not just through uh, the facts of the story, but to link it and make it a part of the story. So with that, I'm going to say I'm finished with my portion and I'd like to open up the meeting to other uh, feedback. Trisha or Lori is right there. So let Lori go ahead and go. So, go ahead, Lori. I just had something small I wanted to add. I really enjoyed Aaron's speech. I felt that he spoke from the heart and I could feel how genuine it was. One thing I've noticed when Aaron speaks, he's so expressive with his hands. They move around so fast. It looks like this. It's this very, very fast movement in front of his face. So yes, we want to be a little bit expressive and show our hands, but we want to move them slowly so that it's not this blur in front of our face. <clears throat> That's my suggestion for Aaron. Thank you, Lori. And I think Trisha, you had your hand up next. Go ahead, Trisha. Yes, I really appreciated Aaron as a storyteller. He begins his speech really quiet, like it's a secret he's sharing with us one on one. And then his voice takes off. And throughout the speech, just lows and highs and louds and softs and I was completely engaged. I couldn't wait to hear and, and knowing per Aaron personally, you know, that he, he is getting to that area in the, his life that, where he's able to move on. And I'm, I'm very glad that he's up, but I really, really just enjoyed him as a storyteller. Thank you, Trisha. And Doug, go ahead. I really enjoyed the opening of Aaron's speech. He grabbed my attention. He got my curiosity. And that's one of the things I like to look for is, does the very first thing grab my attention? He starts off talking about a lost opportunity, you know, that he'll never get back. And then moved into talking about Skype. And I'm like, where is this going? But I was certainly very interested to know and paying attention and he did a great job with that and yeah he is um he he gave us an expressive story it was it was well done and aaron i hope you find joyance in a relationship anyone else before we Anyone else? Okay, Rick, back to you for the general evaluation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for picking up that evaluation of the CD of Pants. You did a great job with that. And our speakers, I really believe, did a very, very nice job this, this afternoon. I would like to quickly touch the table topics. Doug had a different way of doing table topics, leave out a word. I thought that was fun, and I would love to try to do that in another club at some time. Just playing with it was a great idea. Laura, uh, Lori, leave out the word the. 
we caught you a couple times using it. So Lori was a little bit slower in the thought process than usually. She usually just goes right on, but she did touch the important things about the master chef in the house. Don, Don to leave out the word eat. That was so cute, the way she pulled the words around. And whenever she wants to make a pumpkin pie, I'll be over because I love that too. David, your favorite movie, but leave out the word watch. I did not hear the word watch go in there. I don't know if anybody else did, but I didn't hear it. David, I'd like to offer a drop of feedback. Your voice is so soft, but it's so calming. It's such a, a very nice voice. I did enjoy your voice. I enjoyed the calming effect, but try to bring up a little bit more volume, but keep it soft. It, it Very, very, very nice. Uh, it's Myself, it because it's our sleeping, sleeping toy, so I need to slow down the voice. So that's why I didn't use some exaggeration of my vocal variety. Understood. Understood. Thank you. And for myself, I'll let you all <laughs> evaluate that as you choose. Overall, I would say it's been a very good meeting today. Even though we only have seven people here, it was a meeting that would be any club would find great joyance in listening and being part of our our meeting today. So thank you all for being here, enjoying our meeting. And now back to our Toastmaster, Don. Would you like to uh, do the reports, Rick? Oh, yes, please. Sure. Reports, our grammarian, Lori, would you like to give us a grammarian's report? Yes, I would. There were Four uses of the word joyance, once by Don, Doug, and Rick, you used it twice. I also listened for really good uses of pauses, and I noticed Trisha, Aaron, myself, Don, David, and Rick used pauses really well. <clears throat> for grammarian, I have a few grammarian corrections for Aaron. It might be, might be because English isn't a first language. He said, uh, trip and fell. <clears throat> it would be trip and fall, so that they're both in the present tense, or tripped and fell. So we want to pay attention to tense. How I truly feel it would be how I truly feel in the present tense or felt in the past tense. When I heard uh, I have a belly button for drinking, I thought maybe Aaron was referring to the English phrase beer belly. When someone has a belly from drinking, it's a beer belly. Those were the things I heard in Aaron's speech. And for a counter, I'm hoping that we have time that I can sing the awe counter report to Old Lang Syne. Don as Toastmaster, head four ands. Trisha as speaker one, had many filler words. I heard more than five ands, one like four so's and four wells. For Aaron as speaker two, I heard three ands and one repeat. For Toastmaster Doug, just was clean. Good job, no filler words. For Dawn as topics speaker, I heard four ands and two so's. For David, three ands, one so. One well and one okay. For G E Rick, I heard five ands and three buts. For evaluator Don, combined both times, there were two ums, more than five ands and two so's. That's it for my grammarian report. Thank you, Lori. 
First time I heard that to old Ang Zine. Very, very, very nice and great report. Thank you. David, can we have a timers report? Sure. <clears throat> but I can't use the style of during the timer report. Okay, I just use the number one to do report. Okay, this is report for previous B speaker. First speaker, Trisha, um, eight minutes, one second. Second speaker, Aaron Leung, seven minutes, 55 seconds. That's all for previous session. And for table topic speaker, the first speaker, Rory, one more, two minutes, 26 seconds. And second speaker, John Nocera, one minute, 44 seconds. And myself, two minutes, 27 seconds. And for the last speaker, Ravi, one minute, 53 seconds. That's over for table topic session. And the last, the last part is the evaluation. <clears throat> and the, the, those evaluations for our first speaker, Trisha, three minutes, 41 seconds. And the second speaker, and, and uh, those evaluation for second speaker Aaron, three minutes forty seconds. That's all for the table. That's all for the time report. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you for joining us in the meeting, picking up a role, and I really hope to see a lot more of you. Keep coming. We like having you here. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting back over to our Toastmaster, Don. Yay, thank you. And Lori, I know that you usually have a meeting right now. It's 103 my time. So if you need to take off, you are more than welcome to. And um, we're not gonna have a meeting the next two weeks. So over the next two weeks, it's our holidays. So we're going to, I think our first meeting after the holidays is January the 4th or not the 4th, the 9th, I believe that's what it is on my calendar. Uh, yes, January the 9th. My and it was 1.30, so I don't have to disappear. Nice, how very wonderful, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm gonna stop the recording here at this time.